The women's rights movement marks July 13, 1848 as its beginning. In New York, Elizabeth Cady Stanton was invited to tea with four women friends. In the course of their conversation turned to the situation of women. Stanton poured out her discontent with the limitations placed on her own situation under America's new democracy. Hadn't the American Revolution just been fought 70 years earlier to win the Patriots freedom from tyranny? But women had not gained freedom even though they'd taken equally tremendous risks to those stranger years. This was the beginning of a fierce battle for women's rights. First, we have Stanton's opinion on the situation of women's rights. One of the documents I am proudest to have contributed to is the Declaration of Sentiments. Our document, of course, demonstrates many similarities to the Declaration of Independence, which was our exact intent in writing it. We did find it necessary to make a couple of changes to the document's wording, such as, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This shows a slight adaption to Thomas Jefferson's words, but we did find it to be what he was intending. Much like our Founding Fathers did with King George, we also listed our grievances on how we have been denied our rights. Some of these charges include having deprived her of this first right of a citizen, the elective franchise, thereby leaving her without representation in the halls of legislation. He has oppressed her on all sides. Also, he has made her morally an irresponsible being, and she can commit many crimes with impunity provided they be done in the presence of her husband. In the covenant of marriage, she is compelled to promise obedience to her husband, he becoming, to all intents and purposes, her master, the law giving him power to deprive her of liberty and to administer, administer chastisement. The last example is, he has endeavored in every way that he could to destroy her confidence in her own powers, to lessen her self-respect, and to make her willing to lead dependent and abject life. Only a few crimes we charge the men of this so-called great country of the United States. The Declaration of Sentiments is only the beginning of our work. I, like many other women, refuse to back down until women have the right to vote. Only then can we declare this an equal and just country. Dear Diary, this day and age is a difficult one for women, and I am tired of this. My journey for women's suffrage started at a very young age, but I would declare it was the Seneca Falls Convention of 1848 that truly motivated me to the level I am today. Not only women's suffrage, I would generally consider myself a proponent for equal rights. However, if the blacks were to get their vote first, I would be quite unhappy, though I'm sure that will never happen. <laughs> How nearsighted I was. I simply cannot believe blacks received their vote before I did. Simply atrocious. Women, after all, make up 50% of population, so we should, of course, be able to vote. Though at one point I fought for equal rights of blacks, I do not feel the same way anymore. I am extremely disgusted with this, so much to the dismay of my former friend, Frederick Douglass. I will not support the 15th Amendment. Though I am, of course, an avid supporter of women's suffrage, I pride myself for taking a stand on issues bigger than just the sphere of women's suffrage covers. Issues mainly related to religion, how it relates to women's equality within the law, is something I pride myself on attacking and trying to improve for women's rights. Next, we have another strong advocate for women's rights, Lucretia Mott. Dear Diary, conventions I have visited have excluded women from their ideals, not allowing them to be allowed in dis discussions, and amending the Constitution to include rights for the Negro man, but not the women. As one of the first proponents of women's suffrage, I have felt for a long time that the women should receive her protected vote. I had visited a convention where us women were not allowed to be seated with the men. I knew that we needed to fight for women to have equal rights as those of the men, not only white, but Negro as well. I originally did not have an issue with fighting for Negro rights as well as women's rights, but the 14th Amendment only included men. After this absurd decision, I could not agree with the 15th Amendment, since the Negro man was included before us women. 
It seems that every other group of people shall be granted the right to vote before the women. I feel as though it is time for women's suffrage to be the main fight, since we have waited long enough for it. The Negro has gotten their opportunity to vote. Now it is our time. The fight for women's suffrage did not stop after the 14th and 15th Amendments. For instance, a woman in Missouri had attempted to register to vote, but she was not considered a lawful voter because that state's laws allowed only men to vote in Missouri. This led to the Minor v. Happersett United States Supreme Court case in 1875, in which the court held that the Constitution did not grant women the right to vote. It was based on an interpretation of the Privileges or Immunities Clause of the 14th Amendment. It was not until 1920, with the 19th Amendment, that women were granted the right to vote and finally had their suffrage. And finally, we have Susan B. Anthony, the last of the fierce three who fought for women's rights. Dear Diary, now is the time for change. It's an era of change. Every day I record and view the events of the day. Lincoln's death, political conundrums. Every day is the same, but I call for change again today. I will cut off this right arm of mine before I ask for the ballot for the Negro and not for the woman. It's our time, not the blacks. We deserve the vote too. Elizabeth and I haven't been seated at conventions for black rights. We weren't given the respect that the men demanded. It's the time for women. The vote is our right and the vote is our fight.